Okay, I'm going to make a Tin Man here. I sped up some parts of this screen recording and slowed down other parts. Uh, this is an Illustrator lesson. And I'm going to show you I drew the Tin Man. I draw the Tin Man. I'm about to draw the Tin Man. And I looked on Google for some reference of the Tin Man and I wanted to draw my own original uh, image of the Tin Man. Uh, I didn't want to steal someone's clip art because that gets everybody a little bent out of shape when they're watching me play around here on Illustrator. Um, but I started to draw it from memory and then I realized I just need some human reference. I could guess what human reference is but I'm not very good at it. Some people have a natural instinct to draw human shapes and they understand so I go here I do a little quick screen grab of this silhouette. I could just as easily have photographed a friend in this shape on my iPhone, air dropped it to the computer and then just used it as reference. I'm simply using this as a reference uh, for human scale so that it just looks right. And right there it kind of looks like a color forms thing, which is really, when you think of color forms, that's really how I'm doing this. If color forms, if you remember, is like old vinyl stickers that you put on windows or whatever. So I'm making all these various little color form shapes just as the various parts of the human figure. And they're squares, they start out as squares, circles. And by grabbing the point selection tool, which is the white arrow, I'm able to manipulate the various parts. You could also delete. If I draw a square then I delete one one of the points it turns into a triangle and that's how I arrived at the triangle. So I'm just throwing in all the various elements trying to find that gesture of a human shape and I also want this to look like a series of parts connected so that's why I'm drawing in the so-called color form pattern so it looks like a series of parts that are loosely connected. I want to be able to see the joggy points between the the shin and the thigh and the shoulder and the arm and so that's why I'm kind of jumping these parts around a little bit now I'm drawing with the pen tool you just click 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 kind of like a spider web and then you come back around and then you close that and you make it a full part and doing the same thing here on the other arm the color is going to jump from its whatever point to the other point so that's why you see it kind of webbing across from the last point to the first point Sometimes it'll web across the image you're trying to draw. You could draw it without any color, and you'll just see the line. So making the different gestures, just trying to come up with some a little bit of like an original style here, not necessarily stolen from the clip art. Uh, to reiterate, I could have photographed anybody. I just grabbed this image offline just because it's the Tin Man standing there. I changed the axe just for my personal preference. I know he does not use a double bit axe in reality, but I'm just having fun here and just overlapping all the parts because later in the Pathfinder I'm going to select parts and connect them. So all these different parts are right now are, are like a puppet you could imagine. I can drag and shape any of these parts, change the gesture and also I'm using the point selection tool to change the gesture of these various shapes by selecting a couple at a time. It's easy to select in the wireframe. In Illustrator, if you go to Command Y, it brings you into this view. I think it's the wireframe view. I'm not even sure what the hell it is. There's so much I know about Illustrator just from habit. I don't even know how to define what it is called. Now I'm copying this. So that's my master. I don't want to get rid of that. Copy it. Click and drag. Option. Control. Click. I think. Or, or shift. Control. Click. No. Option. Click. Drag. That gives you a double. So now I'm um, slowed this down quite a bit so you can see where my pointer goes. I'm going over to the Pathfinder and I'm going to select part on part becomes one part. So two parts together that are touching. You give it a clicky poo and it turns into one object. And now I'm taking a look at it up close. And because I made a copy, I can delete it and make a change and go back and just make another copy from the master there in the center or now on the right side of the screen. So I'm looking up close and looking at it and I'm making some decisions. I'm like, yep, the hat looks a little too high for me. So you know what? Let me just delete it and make another. I'm pretty sure I delete it. As I recall, yep, I just undid it. Control, 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 control Z, control Z. Um, and now um, command Z, sorry, command Z. So I, I lowered the hat or the funnel. And then I connected that. That looked good. And so now I'm pretty happy with it. But I'm going to go back into the point selection tool. And now that I have all the parts connected, I'm just going to drag some points around just to kind of change the gesture here and there. I can delete a point or shape it. Just uh, having some fun here. 
Uh, I thought that would look cool. Kind of looks. I'm trying to go for that 1920s cartoon look. If you guys remember the book version of the Tin Man, like the illustrated book version, I didn't actually look at it on this particular day, but it was kind of what I was thinking of. I maybe consciously didn't look at it because I didn't want to, uh, you know, steal somebody's artwork. So here I'm going to have the Tin Man sitting on a on a block that's going to become my cutout silhouette. Type in type in any any font, and then I select the font I want, which is standard stencil for my logo. And then I create outlines. Just right click on it and select make into outlines. When you take any font and create outlines, you basically turning it into artwork or vector artwork, which now any program you bring it into, it doesn't have to recognize the font because it's no longer technically a font, it's just another shape. So I put the font in outlines on top of the background square and then I selected cut through and that's the in the pathfinder, that's where you see like a, a hollow square on top of a solid square, it cuts it out. And that's just my little connective piece. Another connective piece and I select everything and, and connect them together. And so now I have that as an object. I think I, again, just like I have the original guy, I have the guy now that is just the body and then just the body with the sign on it. And now I'm kind of zeroing in on it. I give it a little bit of a color just to start to see it in you know more of a finished piece. And I'm just moving those points around and making a square and a square actually I made a square made it into a fang and then just copied and pasted now I'm dragging them both a little bit longer I like that one longer so I just copied clicked and dragged it so you can always just keep deleting pieces and using the for the latest generation of that part you drew and now I'm making an altogether new file because that is now the file for the finished part I save everything else for my history if I need to go back and I want to change that shape up or say if it's a client job and I want to go back and the client wants to adjust something, I always have that original. This is going to be the one that goes into being coming artwork for the final cut. So I use this as, I might call this the Tin Man File Final or the Tin Man Final. First one is Tin Man work, Workstation, which basically means it's all my working pieces that help me get to this point. And uh, so then I take this into the Torchmate software. And uh, see, I saved this as something different. I forget what the hell I called it, but I know my habits. I have these habits of making this kind of, this is kind of like my messy workstation of like, if I was making it in wood, those would be all my cutout parts laying around my table. I'd save them in a box. And now this is my finished piece all glued together. And now I'm going in there and just adjusting it again. Just as you keep looking at it, you keep seeing various things you need to adjust. And even after I finish this screen recording, I actually put buttons down the front of it just holes. And so this is a previous thing I cut out. Some of you might have seen this on Instagram. I made this big saw blade. And now in, I already have gone to the Torchmate software and made the Torchmate cutout file, which is a little boring unless you have a Torchmate. But with that Illustrator file, I can then go to the CNC and cut it out on the, uh, on, the, on the vector, outside the vector. I could bring it here into this Torchmate and turn it into a cut path. I could go to my uh, laser cutter and cut it out on a cut path. You can see the buttons I added. I'm zooming in just to see if the start is inside of the cut path. Now I'm throwing on a big piece of quarter inch steel. Um, this is a leftover piece from the barbecue video I just put out a couple days prior. And now I'm cutting out the Tin Man. So you could see how if you get good at Illustrator you could draw anything you want, or any shape, and bring it into any other cutting program. And that's really the point of this. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a lesson in Illustrator. How to just use Illustrator parts, just like color forms, and then connect them together with the, with the Pathfinder tool. And then turn that artwork into, in this case, a lawn, a lawn ornament lawn lawn ornament and here we go just sticking it in the backyard and i hope you learned something or two from this video thank you for watching oh look at my chicken 
I was laying in the grass looking through my GoPro trying to make sure that the, the tractor and the silhouette of the 20 inch guy look the same. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. I appreciate your patronage. Thank you guys very much.